<clears throat> All right. Let's get this party started. We'll still do 30 minutes, even though my boss texted me. Because I was supposed to go into the office today, but it seems like he doesn't need me to. But I still, I was going to go for a very specific reason of getting um, screenshots for the game. But that's going to be much harder to do if I'm not there. So I might not be able to get the multiplayer stuff, but I might be able to get other things. But I just, I think if I can get the build from somebody. Actually, hold on just a second. Let me, because this seems pretty urgent. Can anyone send over a, a exe of the build to me so I can get some screenshots? Gotta minimize this just so you guys don't see top secret stuff. All right. First question. If you could just talk, it'd be easier. If you especially, you only need to write if like you're not going to be in the class. Because it makes it so I can paint and listen versus stopping and reading. If you don't mind, Alex. Or not. <laughs> okay, so here's a question that I had first time when I saw your tutorials. It's obvious that you really use a racer, that you really rarely maybe use a racer when you're painting, so it's like every uh, every stroke counts. My question is, what is your way of thinking when you're painting that fast? Okay, and then is it just tips or is it just experience? Okay, how do you control shapes and design language when you're using block and technique? And also, uh, how do you balance with speed? How do you balance your personal taste and design language with objectivity or with a larger target group of people? I think you already answered that on this question. Okay, so the first question is, uh, I rarely use a racer. Well, uh, I do use the racer. Uh, I use it in a negative I use it as a a choice tool or a, another way of sculpting. Like sometimes when I paint, like for instance, if I'm using an eraser, it's just me using white or me cutting away the edges of something. Okay. It's one way of thinking about that. And then the, the idea around, do I think about my strokes? Well, I have a good answer for this. The answer is simple. Now I'm going to frame it around an idea that you can relate with. So let me ask you, Alec. Do you think about how to catch yourself when you trip and fall? Like As you're falling to the ground, let's say you're walking, Alec, and you, you over or misstep, and you fall to, towards the ground, do you think to yourself, I need to put my hands in front of me to catch myself. Do you like literally think to yourself, got to put my hands in front and catch? No, right? Let me give you another example. When you're walking, do you think to yourself, and I'm assuming you know how to walk, do you think to yourself, hey, I got to put this foot in front of the other. No, right? You just you just walk, right? And when you begin to run, do you think to yourself, hey, I need to pick up the pace. I need to accelerate my movement. No, you just do it, right? So what does this mean? So does that mean that when I'm painting, I am uh, based off of reflex? And the short answer is absolutely. Okay? A lot of what you see me do that looks like magic is just a product of over a decade of practice. Imagine doing something every day for 10 years and not getting good at it to the point where it's just reflex. No, there's absolutely tips. I'm just kind of, I'm just trying to erase any, uh, any 
implication that any tips that I give you is going to make you have these results right away. And not not that I'm saying that you would thought like once I give you this tip, you're going to be able to paint this as well as me tomorrow. I'm saying it's not. it might not even take you a week or a month or years. It might take you a few years, several years to be able to get to this point. Make sense? But there are definitely things you can do to practice to sharpen this blade, you know? So think about the walking thing for a, for a second. So what, why did I bring up the walking thing? Well, it's because, you know, when um, I was re- watching my kids grow up and learning how to walk, um, I saw them. They, they, didn't, they didn't know how to walk. I mean, they still kind of don't know how to walk. And they still trip and fall often. You know? And it's because they're learning. And the more they do it, the, the more their brain is just going to figure it out. And that's the kind of thing that I think a lot of people don't realize is that when you're growing up, you're doing lots of different things like learning languages, learning cultures, learning ideals, that your brain was putting a lot of time and effort into storing into your subconscious. And that's why researchers have discovered that it's, it's not true that as you get older, older you are physiologically more um, – it, it's not that when you get older that physically, physically it's harder for you to learn new things. That's not true. Uh, it's not – like there's uh, – they notice that, if, of course, if you get really old, there is significant change in terms of how much you can learn. And it, it can be exponential bad for you if you don't take care of yourself like if you don't exercise or eat right throughout your life when you reach a certain age you might make a huge dip and it might be very recognizable very noticeable you know i'm not talking about that i'm talking about just in general on the average right like if you leave live a happy and well structured life you won't run into these these issues physically physically right but yet learning new things is difficult right it's not that your brain can't learn new things but it just seems like it can't it seems like it's having a hard time and the reality is it's not so much that it's your body fighting against it or your brain is fighting against it necessarily um it's it is your bias it is when you grow up, you were raised a certain way, you were exposed to certain knowledges and information, and those things have been deep rooted into your worldview, your sociology, like your social views, your political views, you know, your creative views, your artistic views, and all of these things are what's truly suppressing your ability to learn new things. Do you understand? So this is a tip. Don't let these things get in the way. And you'll learn faster. So how do you how do you uh train this? Well, here's here's some advice I usually give to people. When you're trying to learn something, and I'll give you a more practical uh tip too, which will answer I think your third question. Or was it your second one? I forget. But I think it was your second question. But the The way that I usually tell people is always just assume you don't know shit. I don't mean like humbly (laughs) tell other people you don't know enough. Like, oh, you know, I'm still kind of. No, like truly believe you don't really know everything until you've discovered that information. And a good way to test this is to, like, if you feel like you really know something, right? There's a few ways to test this. One, put it to practice. If you think you can draw good or you have a good sense of what people would like to see, then put it out there and see how people react to it. If people don't react to it well, then you have to kind of wake up a little bit, don't you? You have to understand that maybe you don't know what the hell you're talking about. I did a whole video on this, actually, like one of my tutorials, and it basically talks about how if I don't trust Rotten Tomatoes as a review, uh, as a, a, a reliable review um, platform, because there are some movies that I love 
that they gave really bad ratings. And there are some movies that I hated that they gave really good ratings. But I don't pay attention to that. I pay attention to statistical numbers. If people get up and go to pay to watch a movie like I do, like if I'm going to leave my house and spend upwards to $20 for watching a film, like it better be worth it, man. You know? And so if a movie can get people to do that, then you have to ask yourself, are you the, amongst the minority or the, uh, the the populace, right? And that's kind of, that's how you, you can test your object, objectivity and your confirmation biases, right? That's ways to test it. Put your, your ideas to practice, okay? That's one way to test how stupid you might actually be. <laughs> and, oh yeah, hold on just a second. Um, and then, so then, um, and so then what, what I would like for you to understand then is that when you want to test your, your lack of knowledge, just test it. And here's another great way to test your ability of knowing things. Can you explain it to others and then for them to actually learn something from what you've said, right? Can you go and teach someone how to do a certain thing? And if they can come back and do it, then maybe you have a much, uh, you have a more practical sensibility of what you're doing. And and this is this is not anything new. Like I'm talking about too, actually. It's like science. Scientists. This is how scientists roll. And this is why scientists can put satellites into space, cell phones, that are like supercomputers in our pockets, because they are constantly putting each other at the test, at the gauntlet. You know, there's a reason why peer review is a valuable uh, resource. It's because it's, it's suggesting that if you are just going without any other opinion, um, then how are we going to validate your actual, you know, findings? And, and even when people review, they're like, okay, well, where is the results? And then you show them the results and they say, well, then can you replicate results? There's so many things you have to go through before people take into consider what you believe or what you've found right that's why science works and you can apply that same science methodology to artistic growth okay so now specifically how do you get better at painting strokes like well what is the tool what is the, the tip that i can give you on that well just uh basically time yourself don't do paintings that take several hours and don't not know how long a painting takes it's like say i'm going to try to finish a painting in one hour and i mean finish like try to take it to completion in an hour and you're not you're not going to be able to do it obviously the first few times nor the first seven times but remember how i asked you the more you do something the better you get at it and you said yes i agree with that remember that well think about it if you don't practice your brush strokes often and you don't quantify it, like you don't give yourself some sort of time limit or some sort of way of looking at it and objectively coming up with a solution, then ask yourself, why are you so, uh, why are you so confused that you don't know how to paint so well? Not to say that that's you specifically, it's just, it's just a great way to kind of have a inner dialogue with yourself. Always ask yourself, how much time have I actually put into this? Oh, not that much time? Oh, that's why I suck. Remember, caution on the side of ignorance. Just assume you don't know anything. There's like a great quote that kind of reflects what I'm saying is like this guy said, uh, he's like, um, I know that I'm like one of the smartest people on this planet. Or I know that I'm wise, wiser than most. I'm paraphrasing here. So I know that I'm wiser than most because I know that I know nothing. Right? Saying basically, people who believe that they don't know anything um, are going to be more wiser because then they're going to find the answers. Uh, another really good quote was from Mark Twain, which again I'm going to paraphrase. He said, "It is better to is better to not know, right? It is better to not know versus to know and be wrong. Meaning that it is better just to say, you know what, I don't know." I don't know the answer to that question. 
versus saying, oh, the answer to that question is this, and then being wrong. Because people that are in this vein usually will, will double down on how wrong they are. You know, this is how you have cultural societies that have really bizarre belief systems. This is how you have uh, religions that, you know, you might disagree with, or you have people that don't take their kids to get vaccinated, for instance. You know, they think that they're right, even though they're dangerously wrong, you know? And so it's better just to say, you know what, maybe I don't know, and then try to know. <laughs> Aristotle, the more you know, the more you don't know. That's a great one. I like that one. Yeah, and so I think the second question, and then I'm going to go to, uh, what, what was it? How do you control shapes and design language when you're using block and techniques? That, that one is just a matter of just being good at brush, like just painting in general, just practice. And then you just got to study different design shapes to just be better at it in general. All right. Any other questions? I'll let Brash ask. You can, yeah, you can do it over the mic, by the way. Brush. Brace. Blaze. Hello? Can't hear you if you're talking. Yeah, you should try, by the way, William. It's just a good tactic. Oh, it's not working? Well, let me see. Yeah, see, this is what I'm saying. Why don't you just jump out and jump back in and then try to ask? And if it still doesn't work, you can just type it. And we'll wait for you. If someone else has a question in the meanwhile that I can try to answer quickly. Even if it's not quickly, I'll just answer it. Can you hear me? I can hear you, William. Um, I had another kind of related question to the other one. Um, like if I, I started rendering my first thumbnail and it took like a ridiculously long time, is it better to, to do that? Because I know you like some of the rendered... Uh, it, is, it is better to not take a long time. I know, right? Yeah. That's, and that's so, so um, just time yourself and just be really stern. Like, you only have, like, 30 minutes and just stop, no matter what. No matter how you feel about it. Right? Um, so... The way you, you get better at it is by just doing that often, right? You'll start asking yourself better questions of like, why am I spending so much time? Like, what am I doing, you know? And one thing that I uh, encourage people to do when they do that is to to time themselves in intervals. So that way, when you are, let's say, um, halfway through the painting, you your timer goes off and you're like, oh, shoot, you know, I've been only painting fingers for the like last 20 minutes, you know? Yeah. Like, that's the way you catch yourself. You get it? Like, you catch yourself sooner than later. And then the more you do that, the more you'll end up kind of like what I have already kind of built in. You'll just have, like, this internal clock. And you can just feel it. Oh, you already spent, like, 10 minutes on this the silhouette. I need to move on. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. And uh, yeah. You, you will, you'll do that more and more often if you just kind of do what I suggested, which is, like, stop. Uh, have a timer and stop every 10 five to ten minutes i usually have my timer stop every like i have like off numbers because i think that there's something about that meaning like i have it stop at like ten or six minutes or seven minutes you know it's like always like off like right now my timer is i have a 11 minute timer it's like one minute over 10 minutes it's just like why well i, I have a feeling there's something there to like not having it so perfect you know having it more realistic like i do need that extra minute Anyways, um, let's, let's let's see if Blage is. Uh, yeah, I do remember. Anomaly. I think Blage has figured it out. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Can you hear me now? Oh, wait, hold on, just a second. Yeah, I can hear you. Uh, yeah, okay. I'm sure we did met. I'm sorry if I don't remember you exactly, Colin. I apologize. I meet a lot of people when I travels. But I'm glad that we did meet. That's all good, dude. I have a great story that I'll tell you about, like, 
uh, meeting one of my favorite artists and then how that turned out. I'll explain that in a little bit. Anyways, go ahead, Blush. What were you going to say? Yeah, I, I just, uh, sorry for my English. I will try to be as. Nope. Uh, you better have perfect English. How <laughs> dare you? I don't, I won't take questions unless they're in perfect English. <laughs> I'll try to. <laughs> uh, uh, when I subscribed to your uh, workshop, I actually, uh, uh, for some other reasons, I, I found you on ArtStation and oh, cool. liked your style. Um, I put you on my side of the guys you already showed today. I, I really liked Sergei Kuleso and Piotr Lyubonsky. Oh, those guys are amazing, yeah. And I, I find your rendering style uh, a bit similar to theirs. I'm like right uh, now even using one of their brushes. So yeah, <laughs> you know, there's no, uh, there's definitely it's not a coincidence. Well, uh, but none of them are <laughs> are, are teaching the <laughs> painting. So yeah, uh, uh, I was thinking if you, I, I like, I really and not and I not to take a jab at them. It doesn't necessarily mean they would be able to even explain how they do what they do. Yeah. Keep I, that in mind. <laughs> Yeah, just just yeah, because know, some people are just really good, and they don't themselves know how to maintain their goodness, or not yeah, sorry, I, uh, teach it to others. So, yeah, yeah. so I'm sure he, uh, I'm sure they would be good teachers though, because um, they're pretty consistent. That's usually I what I look for. Yeah, if they're consistently good, then you you can kind of see it. But if you ever watch their video tutorials, um, uh, you can learn a lot from just watching them. They have a yeah, free. They're free and they're just they're just not talking but you can if you just analyze yeah i think i found from. one of them on on he has live streamings i think sergey Coleso. yeah i used to watch a lot of them highly recommend well the same yeah um i i i was just uh i wanted to ask you if you were i I'm, i enjoyed the process so far i i would just like to explain you my situation Go ahead. Uh, in order, if you are, uh, if you think you would adjust your your teaching method for me. Yeah, no problem. Uh, actually, I'm not uh, that much into concept art. Uh, I mean, this is not my goal. How dare you? <laughs> I, I know I am into concept art, but I'm not looking to work in this field or anything. Okay. Because I guess I'm. I, I I think I'm even a bit older than you are. I, I have kids also. I uh, uh, I am co-owner of a small post-production company, and uh, I do mainly 3D. Um, and uh, drawing is kind of my hobby, not the, the profession. Got so. It. Um, I'm asking this just because I don't know what's coming up. So, uh, but for now, uh, I gain experience even at your. Uh, uh, how how to put this? Well, let even me, the way this is, yeah. Let me, let me make, it, make it easier for you. So, what what is what is it that you want to achieve? Um, just get better <laughs> at drawing. Yeah. Let me ask you another question. Yeah. Um, what would, what is it that you really want to accomplish in in your in your career? Oof. For now, I think that I've already done it. Not. <laughs> I think it, there, there's. Uh, no, that's uh, that's a good answer. That's fine. Don't, don't feel like you, yeah, <laughs> that's not the answer. No, I th I, I, if you I mean, feel like you've accomplished, like for instance, I feel that way, right? I feel like I've accomplished <laughs> the things that I wanted to do in my career, and this is why I feel a little bit more uh, wiser about the decisions I make nowadays. You know? Yeah. All right, I so don't mean I, there's no room for improvement, or of course I want to get better at it, but I think that uh, I, 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 if people envy my position, actually. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I gotcha. The, the way we we have it here at our firm yeah um so so the the question is not rooted in really around kind of like 
what you would accomplish in your career then? I think let's rephrase the question. Like, are you satisfied with what you've accomplished? And I don't mean like, yeah, I'm happy. I don't have any regrets type of thing. Like there was a reason why you took my course aside of just trying to get better, I'm sure. And this is a common thing that I see amongst my peers. And it seems like you're amongst my peers because you're a professional, yeah. you work in the industry. So I see this happen yeah. all the time. I have friends who work for Blizzard, <laughs> right? Blizzard Studios. I have friends who work for Sony and Riot and these like large mm -hmm. game companies and studios. I have people who work for uh, ILM, uh, you know, Framestore, these amazing uh, film production studios. Yeah. Right, and I have students who work for really large concept art companies as well, mm -hmm. and they complain. Right, yeah. they they have their complaints, and I'm not saying that you should voice those complaints now. I'm just trying to make you have a larger scope of kind of what I want you to understand, and and what I I've discovered was that I I was not a complainer. I actually enjoyed pretty much every job I've ever had. Right. Mm -hmm. There's only one or two jobs that I can think of that I truly hated working there. And I did something about it, though. I usually leave if I don't like something. You know, I find mm -hmm. a way out and I get out. Uh, and so that's what happened with all that, that one studio. But aside from that one studio, you know, I was generally um, <coughs> happy. Like I loved Blizzard, for instance, when I was working at Blizzard. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stop painting for a second so I can just explain. Okay. And so. Like, what I'm getting at is that a lot of times, and you can probably really s speak to the rest of the students about this, okay? A lot of times what people think is that when they get to a, a certain part of their career or job or whatever, then that's when life's going to get better, right? Like, that's when I'm going to have happiness at the, the highest possible level, you know? And as you and I know, that is completely not true. Right? Yes. And so a lot of the, the students in the class don't know that yet. Okay? Mm -hmm. They don't know that when they start working for a big studio, they're not the happiness is not going to be just pouring out of their ears. <laughs> right? It, it It's just now you're just going to have to be faced with new problems. Right? Mm -hmm. There's just new things that are going to happen. It, it is like life never lets up. And it never will. You know? Like, mm -hmm. life will always find a way to make things even harder for you. And here's here's a good example. I always bring these examples up. For instance, Robin Williams, right? I, I mention him all the time in my lectures and, and talks, and, and I'll bring him up again. It's because Ron, Robin Williams died from overdose from antidepressant drugs. Why was he on antidepressants mm -hmm. in the first place? I thought he was successful. Right? Yeah. It's because it doesn't matter. Like uh, Brad, uh, Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie are getting a divorce. How are they getting a divorce? Mm -hmm. They're the, the two most attractive people in the world. They're really uh, liberal-minded. They seem pretty level-headed. They seem like they're in love. They have millions of kids together. They're mm -hmm. super successful. They're super wealthy. Why are they not happy? You know? Mm -hmm. Because um, if you think about it, Remember how I was giving those examples of the primal human, right? And how mm. we live our lives uh, much differently now. That's why we have all these different problems that, you know, modern humans didn't, or like primitive humans didn't have to deal with. So think about like an indigenous tribe. There's this one tribe that was indigenous to, um, I forget exactly where they're from, but they, they, are, they live up to hundreds years old, right? They live like up to a few, like, several decades they, they live super long lives even though they're like an indigenous type of tribe right and um, i base a lot of my diet and my like i was like yeah this is pretty interesting i base a lot of what i eat uh this spawns from the fact that those people live so long okay and, mm -hmm. and their lifestyles too they like run hundreds of miles weekly and you they're, know, they're from mexico yes mm -hmm. i think you know you're yeah. i think you know what i'm talking yeah. about so anyway who like, if you look at these people's lives, their lives are simple, right? They they just have to live their life and, like, get some food and build a tribe and commit, uh, you know, um, basically contribute to the tribe. And that's pretty much their life, right? Every day. Mm -hmm. It's simple. 
there's no idea of like, well, how do we make skyscraper tribe huts? You know, <laughs> like how do we make the mo- the next uh, uh, sandal Air Jordans for this tribe, right? Yeah. So we are in that societal. Like this is like a first world type problem, right? We're in these situations, um, and there was a statistic that I saw a long time ago that has echoed with me over the many years of my life, which has showed that people who make up to $70,000, 60 to $70,000 in, in America specifically, okay, mm-hmm. from there on, moving forward, from there, from $70,000 as your, as your salary to $10 million a year as your salary, right? From that yeah. group of people, happiness is indistinguishable, meaning that just because you make more money doesn't mean you're more happier. Make sense? Where it is definitely true on the opposite direction that the less money you make, then that does contribute to your happiness. Because if you're only making $10 a month, that does affect you dramatically. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because you can't afford even a basic living like standard. Right, that 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 affects you pretty traumatically, okay. But my point is, is that um, happiness is not gauged by success, and that's something that I discovered two and a half years ago, and I've been working towards fixing that since. And let me explain to you what I've done, and hopefully this will kind of answer your broader, like, or give you a broader sense of what I want you to ask answer when I give you the question again, okay? And, and the point I'm trying to make is that, like, I was working 10 to 12 hours a day for almost, like, six or seven years of my career. Mm. And one day, me and my wife were having a conversation um, about two and a half years ago where she was telling me about my daughter's, like, third birthday or second birthday or something like that. Or she was telling me about something uh, about my daughter. And I was like, I don't remember doing that. And she's like, oh, you were at work. Yeah, you missed it. And I said, my daughter has no idea what I, like, she understands that I draw for a living. Like, I've taught her that. I explained that to her. She sees me do it. But she has no idea why I'm not around, though. Like, she doesn't understand why I can't be there. Mom is there. You know, when she gets older, mm-hmm. she'll have a, 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 gooder, a, a better understanding of this. Mm-hmm. But... But why, like, why, why do, why does that need to happen? You know what I mean? And I ask myself, I can, if I can work as hard as I did to become this, uh, you know, well-known artist amongst the industry and beloved amongst many uh, aspiring artists, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, Can't I just work just as hard to not work as hard. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I, that's the way I thought about it. And I was like, of course that's possible. Right? The whole work smarter, not harder yeah. philosophy. And so that's what I've been doing for the last two and a half years, right? So check it out. Cool. Now I'm in a position, and it took me about two and a half years to do this. I had to work hard to work less, which now I only work 20 to 30 hours a week. And I make almost... Uh, 1.5 times more money than I did when I was working 10 to 12 hours. Mm. And now I'm teaching my kids how to ride their bikes, uh, teaching them how to draw. I'm, in fact, planning on homeschooling them uh, after elementary school. Because I think right around uh, middle school and high school is when they start to crush your dreams. So I'll, I'll, give, the yeah. edu- I'll give the educational system <laughs> until the time my kids get to el- uh, middle school to fix their shit up. You know, but if they don't, I'll do it myself. I'll teach my kids. They don't need to be in middle school, high school. They can make friends in um, extra uh, activities like sports or um, like gymnastics or ballet or whatever the hell they're into. You know? Yeah. They can make friends that way. And that way, those people, everybody in that room has a common interest. Everyone wants to be there. They're going to make better friends. You know? Um, So... And I'll be able to teach them all the things they'll need to know, and I can never, I don't need to crush their dreams. They'll, they'll, their worldview will be this idea that they can do whatever the hell they want, you know. <clears throat> and so they won't, they won't like end up like my teenage boys who I, did, I failed miserably to, to teach them this, um, which like my 
my oldest son, he's like, oh, you know, I want to be um, uh, a doctor or then a nurse and then a historian and then an engineer. And these are all things that schools teach you that are like the only jobs that exist. <laughs> <laughs> and there's, as you know, as you all know, like that's clearly not true. <laughs> and so, yeah. and so now with all that being said, uh, what is it that you want to achieve? Like, where, where do you feel like you want to go with your, your life in the next instances of it? Holy crap. No, I, I, <laughs> I can't give you that, the straight answer. Like, okay, well, the, then just, the, just think about that, right? I just want you to – you don't have to answer that question right now, and we can keep making a conversation about it throughout the class. Okay? Cool. Yeah. cool. But if you just want to get better at art and just want to get better at 2D, if that's just the most simplistic – thing you want to do then just keep doing what i ask you to do like if you feel like it's hard and it's rough it's fine don't worry about it but no, if you no, I, I don't i don't mind the challenges at all okay cool uh, uh but uh, for, that was the first instinct i mean i just found your your drawings i found out that you're teaching and i said i want to get better at this i need some help because i'm alone here about this uh yeah i mean i'm the i'm the only one of the the company that is drawing and we need some time the sometimes we need some character design or something uh yeah so maybe uh, what i can provide so you uh along with just painting and concept design right i can yeah. uh, i can supply you with um some art directional advice that will help yeah. you become yeah. better about giving feedback and taking feedback all right yeah, yeah that cool that's cool that could be helpful uh, uh, and, uh, so everyone else gets to qu ask questions. I have only another one. Uh, okay. I usually get pretty strong idea uh, at what I want to draw. Uh, but first thing that pops in my head, I want to draw it, and it influences even my iterations afterwards. I, I can't get. Uh, get it off of my mind do you, do you have kind of a technique to do to so like as like you, you say i want to make triangles and then like yeah but then you're like but i know i should try circles too so i'm going to try some circles and then as you're trying the circles you're still making triangles no I, is that kind of what you're trying to get well, like that's a very vague idea I'm trying to explain it but i'm just trying to figure out what you mean uh, for example, you said uh, for, for preparations for your class is think of a character you want to draw and make 20 uh, thumbnails of it. I, I thought of this girl, that this woman, mother, it's blah, 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 whatever my story is. Uh -huh. I, I get a clear picture of what I want in my head. And even when I do thumbnails, this uh, idea interferes with me being loose about it. No, I, I like yeah, everything is. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Okay, so I got gotcha. you. So, so the, the the solution is just keep doing thumbnails, because eventually you're going to get sick of it, and then so you're going to be like, I'm going to have to try something else. You know, mm -hmm. it just is. It's inevitable. I've seen this actually happen so, countless amounts of times. So whatever mm -hmm. I asked you to do before, double down on that. Do more thumbnails. <laughs> I'm serious, because you're going you're going to be forced to draw more. Okay, or iterate differently. You're just gonna have to because eventually you're gonna be like, yeah, you know what? Like, I need to try something different. And it's the different drawing that you do is where you're going to be like, I see now why AJ insists on doing so many iterations. You know, like I think you understand kind of what I'm the point of it of it. It is. Yeah. That's why you're not too hesitant of it. That's why you're trying to like ask how to get past it. But that's the way you do it. Let me tell you a good uh, story of a great designer, and then I'm gonna move on to another question. So there was a great designer named Charles Ames, and he was considered one of the best, pretty much all the stuff that was done in, during the Art Deco era was kind of his work, all right, during uh, American Art Deco stage. And he was, asked, he was asked in an interview, like how did he come up with such great designs? Like what did he do that was so special? Yeah, Ames, okay. Yeah. I know the yeah the Eames chair right and so like he he was asked this question and he said well see what I did was I have a library and his library if you see pictures of it was like enormous it was like a real it was like an actual like full-on library okay yeah and um like his library was so extensive it would have made um 
Beasts library from Beauty of the Beasts uh, look like a <laughs> look like just like a, a little pawn shop or like the magazine section at like a grocery store, right? And so anyway, uh, he said he would go get some books, he would do some research, and then he would come back to his workbench and uh, uh, draw hundreds of sketches, right? Mm. And then once he finds a sketch or an idea that he thought was really good, then he would go back uh, and make a prototype. And once he made a prototype, he would look at the prototype and realize it's garbage, and then he'll do it again. And then mm. he would go to the library, he would uh, do hundreds of sketches, and then do a prototype, and then say it was garbage, and then start again. And he would do mm. that again, and again, and again, and again, until eventually he has to ship the project. All right? Until they're like, okay, mm. now it's time to ship it. And he's like, all right, I'm done. You know? Even though he could probably do it 10 times over. Mm. Right? And this is this is the secret that he told like this reporter because the reporter was asking, right? And you know, they were like hoping for like this kind of profound answer of like, you know, what I do is like I do yoga and then you know, I go outside and I smell flowers and I I look to the sun until my eyes are burnt out of my socket out of their sockets, you know, and then I am fully inspired and creatively charged. No, his answer is pretty systematic. It's just tons of research. Tons of uh, application, and then prototyping, and then uh, mm-hmm. repeat, right? And what mm-hmm. you'll discover is when you do, like when I was challenged to do a mass amount of iterations for myself, I experienced it firsthand. So when he, when I heard the story, I was like, of course, it makes sense, right? Mm-hmm. I remember I had a teacher who told me to draw 400 thumbnails in one week, mm-hmm. and I did that. And I learned a lot about the power of iteration. Okay. Yeah. And so, so, of... so to get out of your head really is just to just iterate till you get out of your own head. Like that's one of the best tools to do it. Mm-hmm. Cool. And then I you'll fall in love not... with it too. By the way, you'll you'll realize iteration is totally the key. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're like iteration will almost always uh, be one of the greatest tools to solve many problems. Uh, that's how mm-hmm. nature works, right? Like that's how evolution uh, works. Yeah, yeah. Just constant trial and error, right? Cool. Thanks, man, for the info. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Uh, I'll leave it to the others. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no problem. That was a good Sorry. question. No, no, no nothing. <laughs> apologize. We're, this is not the only class we're having. We have more classes in the future, so people are welcome cool. to ask more questions. Cool. Yeah. Any other questions, friendos? I saw someone write something for me. I wish I could work at art all day. I'd be happy doing that. I'd I'd do it for minimum wage. Every day that I have to go put in eight hours on a non-art job is torture. Just wish every day could be learning and practicing. That would be happiness for me. (sighs) Yeah. Your your statement bores me, Colin. I'm just kidding. I was just yawning. (laughs) Um, Now, that's a... That's a that's a fair point, but let me uh, let me let me throw some facts at you. So I I have come to the conclusion, and I believe this is true, uh, factually true, which is that um, you only need to spend between fifteen to thirty hours to generally become good at anything, accelerate at really anything. Uh, obviously, we know about the less. The, the second or the first part of that statement, which is if you only put like one hour a week, then you're not really investing too much of your time and effort, right? There's a lot of hours in one week. I believe it's in the hundreds, over 150 hours. If you only spend one hour, that's less than 1% of your time, right? But if you spend, you know, 15 to 30 hours during that week, um, that's, that's more substantial and that's enough. You might think, well, that's, that seems so little. Trust me, it's enough. And I say 30 hours, not 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 hours. Well, I'll explain why. 30 hours, I feel like, is a good tipping point. And if you go too far, then you're working too hard. Now, obviously, if you train hard, you'll get really good results uh, relatively quick, quickly. But at what cost? Right? Imagine, like, training, like weight training. And you go to the gym and you weight train, like, just picking up a weight, uh, bicep curls, let's say, which is curling your arm. Let's say you do that 
for like five hours every day, um, it's going to be detrimental to your health, right? And and more importantly, you're not giving your your body an opportunity to recover. And imagine that same kind of uh, principle and idea to your brain, because the reality is it's the same thing. If you don't give your brain an opportunity to understand what you've learned that day, uh, then it's not going to care about it. It's just going to throw it away. So there's a good balance between overworking and underworking, right? And I'm, I'm trying to suggest that, um, you know, try to stay somewhere in the middle. And you'll see that you can you can have that part time job that feels like torture, but at the same time, really make some real growth to your 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 work. But then, what you'll have to do is start training your your you'll have to start training and teaching yourself how to basically uh, do. You have to basically train yourself and teach yourself how to manage your time more effectively. All right. So hopefully that gives you even more insight. So don't feel so deterrent and i'll tell you a good story i'll end the class with a story about um a minimal amount of time that it was a, based off of a study that was done around the idea of talent and then uh we'll end the class on that but before we do let's take a question i think sebastian had a question uh yeah i got a more, more of like an advice like a continuation of what blast was talking about um, but it's more of, you know, um, and kind of like the backstory of, uh, why, you know, I wanted to take your class, uh, because, you know, when I was a kid, you know, I was, I, I always like, like drawing heads or whatever, you know, uh, but I never really got like a former, you know, training and you started doing it when you were 23, kind of the same thing, uh, I did. And I actually went to the Art Institute, uh, also like you did. Um, and I think I, I had the same experience that you did, where, you know, they, they tell you all this stuff and, like, they got you, like, there and you got to do this and you got to do all this and you got to be good at everything so you actually can get a job and, you know, you can't do, like, one specific thing because if not, then, you know, so it's like the whole four years where it's just, like, what am I going to do, really? So I focus mainly on characters, um, character design, that my portfolio, I graduated with that. But now, you know, uh, I found myself, you know, like, with not even a freelance job, right? So sure. I go back to myself, like, what's wrong with me? Okay, my portfolio. Okay. So now I'm redoing all my portfolio again. Um, but then I'm like, okay, should I do 2D or should I do 3D? Which one should I focus on more? Which one would get me that break? Or, you know, like, so it's like a... a like in an ironic kind of thing where I want to do be good at everything, you know, like specific characters. Uh huh. But what do I focus on, like, so I can, like, you know, get there? I, I don't know. It's just like. I can answer this question very simply. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, just give me one second. It's just like trying these weird sure. colors. Yeah, this one looks cool. All right. So. It's it's really simple, okay. There's there's a few things I want to say to you. First one is, what's the hurry? Like really, my, like what's the hurry? I guess my biggest concern is just those loans, man. You know. Yeah, that's, like, that, that sucks, but that's going to be taken care of over time, right? Mm. So. And the way that I think I believe the loans work is that although you have to pay them back, it's, it scales to your income. So if you're not making a lot of money, they're not going to be coming after you. And you can do something I think was uh, what's it called? Um, you can basically keep delaying the payments until you actually can pay them. Mm. I forget what it's called. It's what I had to do. And uh, you can almost do it indefinitely too. That's what I almost did. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Like, seriously. And then Obama was like, yeah, you guys don't have to pay for that shit. It, it was the greatest lie. But then now Trump's like, no. I was Obama. about to say, does that now, actually work? I mean, I get calls all the time and saying, well, oh, it does you're work wrong because, because you're not in jail. <laughs> That's what I mean. Because <laughs> if, if they really wanted to put people in it, like, to, to pay, they would come for your assets, right? 
Um, but they haven't. They mm-hmm. can call you and, and make it seem like you're, you're fucked. But you're not. So don't worry about it until you do have mm-hmm. some money. But you know, of course, it doesn't mean you should delay it. I mean, you did make a congr- like a contractual agreement, right? Um, mm-hmm. And so just, just be on top of it. Be very transparent. They're they're very mm-hmm. rough. they're very forgiving. They understand that it's hard out there. Um, yeah. So, uh, do you live in California? No, I live in Atlanta, and I know it's a growing industry here. Yeah, I know a lot of laws of Atlanta. Just to interrupt you, I'm not sure the laws, but the, the point I'm trying to make, though, is that um, some states are a little bit more progressive and more forgiving, mm. like states gotcha. like California, um, also states like uh, New York. I think New York, even right now, is trying to do a single-payer educational platform, which is basically free education, but then the bill that they passed is like the complete opposite of that bullshit, and it's fucking... I'm so sick mm. and tired of these goddamn corporations in control of our goddamn government. Anyway, that's a whole different discussion for a different time. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, I'm, I'm really, even though I'm, like, in the same position, I, I think, with, with the whole Donald Trump thing, because, like, you know, I'm Hispanic, man, I'm Colombian, and, you know, like, the whole thing with Mexicans, you know, it's crazy. But I'm just still hoping that he can do something about, you know, the civil norms. But, hey, you know, I don't know. <laughs> no, he's not going to do shit, dude. Don't, don't put your, don't put your hope <laughs> If you were hoping that he was going to fix things, you were absolutely wrong. He's only going to make things worse. Yeah. Have you seen his tax plan he's planning? He It's only like one page. What the fuck is that going to do? It's, it's so – it's like – it's God. I can't believe there's still like 30 to 35% of the people in this country that are like, no, I think he's got it. Like, come on, man. There's like everything he has said has been a complete and it's utter lie. Happening. Anyway, let's get back to you though. Who cares about that? Let's talk about you. So, so what I'm trying to say is that, you know, you're okay. What's the hurry, right? So, you, this this Western ideal of like you gotta work or you're a failure. That's what's happening. That's what's driving a lot of your mm-hmm. your, your your anxieties. Okay. So yeah. once you can kind of like sit down and just think about that and say, yeah, that's that's relatively true, right? So then, so then instead of being so driven on how do I get a job in this industry, right, which is Mm -hmm. important. I'm not trying to say don't be, like, um, ambitious. I'm just saying Mm -hmm. focus your ambition on something that's going to help you in the long run. Don't be so short-sighted. Because look what happened when you were short-sighted before. You're like, I'm going to go to school for three years and I'll get a job. It's going to work out. Right. And it didn't work out, did it? Least, yeah, at least that's what, uh, you know, the counselor said, you know. <laughs> yeah. And it's because it's short-sighted mm-hmm. advice. You're a young kid. You didn't know any better. You know? Yeah. That's, that's how they get you, man. They don't – They in high school and in middle school, that's what I'm saying, they prep okay. you to say you're not going to make a reasonable living unless you go to college yeah. and graduate. And then your parents are all in on this bad joke, and they tell you the same bullshit, okay? Yeah. And it's yep. not their fault. See, now your parents, they're not trying to hurt you. They actually do want you to succeed. And if because you didn't get the job after college, then they don't want to necessarily reflect negative uh, education on they – don't, they don't want to reflect on themselves that perhaps they were bad parents or misguided parents. Mm-hmm. So they have to project it onto you. This is why you might have these extremely defensive and argue, uh, argumentative disagreements with your parents from time to time. We've all been there. But in mm-hmm. most cases, the fact that you did go to art school, you're able to afford this class at some level, I assume that your parents are still supportive of the things that you want to do, right? So I, I don't believe they're the yeah. vicious, evil people. I'm just trying to make a point that mm-hmm. they're, they're, they are also kind of fell into this trap of mentality. Okay, Mm -hmm. and you're not going to be able to convince them um, until you show them, right? Like what I had to do with my parents. Okay, Mm -hmm. this is true for most of you guys, I'm sure. But listen, so stop focusing on all these external things, whether it's the school, or whether it's societal, whether it's your parents or your friends. Focus in on yourself and ask yourself, why did you go to school in the first place? Like, why do you? Why did you choose concept art in the first place? And if you truly have the answer, which is, I just, I do want to be a concept artist. I really think it's a, a good job, and I like drawing, and I want to do it. Mm-hmm. And then the answer is very simple: how to do it. 
mm -hmm. to stay laser focused and just fucking do it. Okay, mm -hmm. be a character concept artist. 2D, you said, then just do 2D. Don't go to 3D. And if you do go to 3D, it's only to supply your 2D. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Like a lot of these concept artists yeah. who use 3D to make amazing 2D images. They're, they're still 2D, you know? Mm -hmm. A lot of these images aren't usable, right? Like the models that they made, they're not necessarily usable. They're mm -hmm. just there to con construct an idea around uh, a concept for the uh, modelers, right? And then mm -hmm. maybe the modelers can use it for like a high poly sculpt, sure. But my point is, is that, you know, focus in, okay? And just focus. Whoops. Much. Now, what do you, you No, know, maybe, maybe, you know, when, when, since you, you have so much going on, you know, how do you, like, one of the struggles is, um, there's, like you mentioned before, I think, in the other class, there's so much information out there, and, mm -hmm. like, there's so much stuff to filter out. Laser, that, you know, I'm, focus. I'm, story right now, you know. Laser, focus. <laughs> <laughs> There is so much stuff out there. You're right. Laser goddamn focus. Because <laughs> because look at do you see this this mech right here? That's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing, right? This is pretty much all Vitaly does. Is mechs. Damn. So well, you think that he goes to a, a job in like he goes to a convention. Do you think that he goes to the convention, he shows them this stuff, and they say, you know what? You know, there's not enough versatility in your portfolio. You only have mechs. You need, you need to add some environments in here. Mm -hmm. You need to add some characters, maybe some stylized stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. Do you think people are going to tell him that? Do you, mm -hmm. you know, honestly believe mm -hmm. that that's the conversation <laughs> that he has these days? <laughs> of course not, right? I, I can count on my 10 fingers – all the people that can come close to Vitaly's level. And that's it. You know what that means? Mm. That wow. means that if I am trying to hire the best mech designer in the industry for pr practically, like practical and realistic sensibility to a mech, right? Like this is like, that's that, that specifics, right? If I'm going to mm. look for the best mech designer, that Vitaly is amongst the top 10 people that I would choose from. In the world. Do you understand what I'm getting at? This is why he's yeah. making mechs for Korean companies. This is why he's designing robotic arms for medical companies. They're paying him the big bucks because he is like the best. And it's because he is laser motherfucking focus. Okay? That's for sure. Yeah. Um, John Lasseter. Do you know who John Lasseter is? Yeah. He's uh, the, the guy, like, pretty much one of the main directors and animators and one of the original uh, people of Pixar, right? Like, that's all he does. Is mm -hmm. He's an animation dude. Like, that is his thing. And so he is the best, one of the best in the world when it comes to storytelling and animation. Because that is what he does. That is, like, all he does really well, right? Add Catmill. Mm -hmm. The guy who's on the tech, tech side, most people don't know him as much because tech is more boring, I guess. <laughs> he is on the other side of the spectrum. He was the guy who created Render Man and all the stuff that wow. people use at Pixar, like the 3D rendering software the, mm -hmm. that allowed them to create the beautiful artwork that they do today. Because that is like his thing. You understand? Like That's like all he was really, really focused on. In fact, the best in the world at whatever they do, that's like what they focus on. Do you think Usain Bolt trains some javelin? Or like maybe, do you think he does some, um, he trains a lot in uh, uh, esports? Like he plays a lot of soccer video games or even plays soccer a lot? He does actually play a lot of soccer. But do you think he like lives and breathes that stuff? And that's why he's such a good runner? No, it's because yeah, he, he does. Yeah. He just well, no, it's because he just only runs. That's like what he does. Mm -hmm. He only trains his run. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's why he's the greatest mm -hmm. and fastest runner on the planet. Does it make sense? Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. I mean, Neil, it, Neil I, I deGrasse guess, Tyson. 
what does Neil deGrasse Tyson do? <laughs> right? Like, it's science. That's his love, man. Specifically science that involves space. Right? Mm. And so if you do the same thing, if you focus, you'll you'll get there, man. It'll just it'll it, it'll take some time. Nothing comes for free. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't take Definitely. years, right? It can take longer. But the point I'm trying to a real strong point that I'm trying to make here is what's the hurry, dude? You know, like just take mm -hmm. your time, stay focused, it's gonna happen. And then one day you're gonna look back like I do and just think how naive it was to just try to get a job. Yeah, because you'll just get a job by the product of being so such a badass or whatever you chose to be badass in. You know, it just won't mm -hmm. happen. It just naturally will just occur. And and uh, and if you're confused on this, um, just do the art station test, which is pick an image that you think is really amazing. This is really amazing, right? Mm -hmm. And then look at yeah. all the artwork that this person does, and you'll see exactly the point that I'm making. That they are pretty much universally have like one type of style to their artwork, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's pretty consistent. You see that? Like it's not like all of a sudden they're stylized stuff here. You know, this is very clearly like, like Chinese aesthetics, super detailed, watercolorish painting style. Mm -hmm. Right? Let's pick another one. Let's pick this one. Where is the environment? Does he even have environments? I guess he'll never get a career. He'll never make it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let me let me tell it's you. So funny, the, man. Yeah, the, 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 because, like, let me like, tell you the reason why. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I keep interrupting you. Sorry, sorry to interrupt you. I mean, it's just like that mentality throughout the whole four years. I had a teacher. She's like, if you don't do everything, you'll never find a job. And I was like, really. Um, <laughs> yeah, anybody that says uh, stuff like that, you have to double check them, because it's it's really, it's really easy to debunk people like that. Because you could just find somebody that doesn't do any of that stuff, and they say, "Well, then what about them?" And then just watch them squirm, mm -hmm. because they they won't be able to have a good answer for you. Um, uh, I had a really good example of this. Uh, one of my students went to a lecture from Marco Djurjevic, and Marco Djurjevic was like, "If you don't draw and paint." Uh, you will never be able to work. And then Shadi Safadi, um, also another great artist, was like, if you don't use 3D, you'll never get work. And my student was just like, what in the world? And he came to me and he says, I respect both of these artists. Both of these artists are amazing and they work in the industry and they make tons of money, right? And he's like, but they both mm -hmm. contradict each other. And I was like, exactly. I was like, but see, here's the thing. Neither of them are wrong. Right, they're right. Mm -hmm. Like, if you paint and draw, you can totally build a great career for yourself. And if you learn 3D and uh, master, you know, photo bashing, you can make a good career for yourself. The question you have to ask yourself is, mm -hmm. what do you want to do? Who cares what they care about? They're just giving you advice. Right. If you choose, I like to paint and draw, then listen to more about what Marco Giorgiorgi is saying. But just take it with a grain of salt. You know, <laughs> don't don't assume that he's 100% correct. That doesn't mean like you should never touch 3D. It just means you are very clearly a 2D artist that will dive into 3D to help make 2D images better, right? Mm -hmm. Like, that's a great way of thinking about it versus, like, I just need to learn 3D and 3D only, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I, I know 3D code. I know how to use 3D software and all that stuff, right? Because I'm just always yeah. trying to find better ways to make images in general or experiences, right? And so... Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, your teachers were really wrong. And <clears throat> and let me tell you, uh, ask yourself, could that, t could, have that, could that teacher be replaced? Like if they, could they have swapped out for another teacher to teach that class? Mm -hmm. And if the answer is yes, then you have to reconsider the kind of education you're getting. Because think about mm -hmm. it. Could you imagine me having a substitute teacher? <laughs> no. <laughs> You can't, right? No. Yeah, because that's the thing. You're learning from me. I'm teaching you, what, and you trust my insight, and I have relatively useful insight. Oh, see you later, Nolan. Peace out. You know? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, and so, uh, and let me let me give you one last piece of in in insight on this. And then uh, I think Christian had a question, and I'm going to go. Um, 
the when people tell you you need to diversify your portfolio, uh, you'll hear this. You'll hear all kinds of mixed matches of advice when you show your portfolio to people over the years you're going to be showing your portfolio to people. And usually mm -hmm. the reason why they say these things is as simple as this. You're just not good enough. Mm -hmm. And it's just harder to say that to somebody's face, right, than it is mm -hmm. to say, you just need more stuff in your portfolio, you know, put more mm -hmm. uh, limes into the ocean type of thing catch to be able to catch more fish. Because mm -hmm. it's not bad advice. Mm -hmm. It makes sense. But the reality is if you want to be a character concept artist, they should just tell you straight up that you're not good enough to be a character concept artist. And here's why. Yeah. And here's what you can do to, to do that. And mm -hmm. so whenever you get yeah. your, your portfolio reviewed and people tell you that you need to diversify your portfolio, say, I understand and respect that uh, critique. But I, I have seen a lot of people do character concept art exclusively. And I think I can do that too. Can you tell me what I'm doing wrong and why you think I'm not good enough? Because mm -hmm. clearly I'm not, and I respect that. But what can I do to improve? Because being bad mm -hmm. is temporary. Right? Gotcha. Yeah. And if you come at them like that, very polite and very professional, then perhaps they'll give you more insight, and they'll tell you exactly why you suck. And then you try to improve mm -hmm. that. Okay? Because that's what happened to me. Yeah. Like, people did that all the time with me. And I, did, I wasn't as profound then. I just was like, oh, I should put environments in my paintings, right? And I did. I used to do that. And I was like, but I don't care about this stuff. Not to say that it's bad or mm -hmm. you do it, you're stupid and I'm better. I didn't think that like, I didn't think that like that at all. I thought I just like to draw characters. You like to do environments? Cool. More power to you. And so keep that in mind moving forward, all right? Okay. Will do. Thanks, man. Appreciate the advice. Definitely yeah. needed it. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Christian, what was your question? Then I'm going to tell that story about Help. I am, time. As an art director, what would you like to see on a thumbnail? Uh, sorry, say it again? As an art director, what do you like to see on a thumbnail? Oh, just clarity. Hey, you... uh, everything that I've been telling you guys is actually practical. It's not, um, it's not like advice to a student to teach them how to draw better or anything. Like, if I really feel that's the case, then I'll... I will make it very clear that you need to work on just basic form and painting in general, right? And I've had students like that. That's why I take all students at all levels because I teach you guys um, whatever I can. And I think it's important too for students who are just starting out to see students who are a little bit more advanced and hear the advice that I give those students because then they can take that with them as they grow, right? But the stuff mm -hmm. that you've been doing is is fine like and i'm trying to tell you clarity it just needs to be able to go to the next stage right okay and yeah. and if it's not clear like i think most art directors um they might not be able to articulate and really understand some art art directors and people that you you think well they would have to know how to paint right they don't mm -hmm. like not a lot of art directors might not actually know how to draw or paint re really well uh or even worse they might not even be able to articulate why you're not very good or you're not doing what they're looking for. And these can be art award-winning art directors, you know, like uh -huh. I've experienced that where I've had art directors who could not explain to me what they wanted from me, but yet they were like really amazing. Um, or they worked on really amazing projects that were known for their art, you know, that is crazy. <laughs> So you have to experience. You have to. You have to be prepared for all of that. Like I've, I seriously, it's actually the 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 thing where I rarely have met an art director that was completely and entirely articulate about their art direction. Does that mean I think they were stupid people or anything? No, I'm just saying. Like, it it, it doesn't sound. It sounded. It's, it seems counterintuitive, right? <laughs> and uh, because I've only can name two or three art directors. Only two, actually. I'm sorry. Just only two who I felt like were just so, they were not only really good at like working on projects and making beautiful projects that had really great art direction. Um, they were really good at explaining why and what they needed from me. And I, I learned a tremendous amount from those people. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll name those people because, or at least I'll name one because, you know, it's, it's more complimentary, right? And I'm not trying to shit on the other ones that <laughs> weren't as good. I'm just trying to, I, I realize that there's a contrast and it's not expected of every person that you might be art directed by. Um, so one of them was Jonathan Baruby. Jonathan Baruby is probably hands down one of the greatest art directors I've ever had. And he was super smart 
and he had a really good sense of uh, what he wanted, and he was able to explain it to me. And what better yet, he was able to listen to what I had to say. If I said, uh, I would say nothing because, you know, you're getting paid for this. There's no real reason to get really into it and get arguments, right? It's like you're, you're, you're doing a job. It's a service. Um, but if they ask you of your opinion, uh, and, and just a disclaimer, it doesn't mean that you should be treated like shit. That's a whole different topic. If people treat you like shit, that's unacceptable no matter where you work, right? But if they just tell you that you're not doing what they're looking for and you just have, um, you know, a disagreement, that you can just keep that disagreement to yourself. It's their project. They're paying you, you know? Yeah. And if you want to make your voice known, then do what I do, right? Paint for yourself. Like, I don't have any of an art director me painting this weird-ass motherfucker, right? So I can just paint him however <laughs> I want. And so um, where, like, after this, I'm going to work on the space game and just draw space stuff. And I follow the lead of my, my boss because it's his game. It's his project. It's his baby, not mine, you know? <laughs> and yeah. so... Um, yeah, like he would also, my art director, John, he would also just, uh, he would ask me, he's like, but he would give me feedback. He's like, yeah, you should do this and that and that and this, but what do you think? And I was just like, huh, well, this is what I think. And I told him, and I was like, you know, I agree with you on this, <laughs> but I, I think we could do better about this, though. And and he was just like, that's actually a good point. All right, then ignore feedback number two, but let's stick with feedback number one, you know? Mm-hmm. And then uh, it, it worked out great. It was great. It was a lot of fun. And that's kind of the point I'm trying to make to you, you know, is mm-hmm. that like yeah. you guys are doing fine as long as you just do clarity, right? I think that's will save you in most cases, not all cases. You know, sometimes your art director wants you to be just super weird, and, like floaty, then just be mm-hmm. super weird and floaty. Uh, but at least you are prepared uh, in, in a more wider spectrum. That's all. I actually prefer okay. having art directors who are have a very, very clear vision, even if it seems very kind of limited in terms of how much I can explore. It just makes mm-hmm. the job easier to get the work done faster. And then there's less stress, too. It's more stressful when it's this constant blue sky, and you're just kind of like, where are we going? Where is this going? <laughs> and every day you draw something new, and you're just like, you don't know if it's going to be hit or miss. That's really... It's really anxiety filled. So hopefully that's um, that helps you out. I think that's the okay. Day. I, I I get it. I get it. Okay, cool. Um, all right. So let me. Uh, yeah, this is the guy. Yeah, this is him. So I'm gonna tell you guys a story that I'm gonna roll out. This has been a long Q and A. Oh, it's been an hour, I believe. And so. Um, the point that I wanted to talk about was the time thing, right? So there's a story that um, some researchers, or this is a research that was done by these scientists, and they were they were trying to, to solve a question which was a, wrapped around this idea of um, talent, right? And I've come to the realization that talent is not a real thing. Uh, does that mean that there are people that are more exceptional than others, that like they, those people don't exist? Of course they do. For instance, Kobe Bryant is a famous American basketball player, and he is taller than me. So he is more, quote-unquote, talented, or at least more fitted to be a better basketball player based off of just his height alone, right? But the reason why he's a, a great basketball player has nothing to do with his height. It's part of it, but not the biggest part. The biggest part is his tremendous amounts of training and years of practice and love for the sport. That's why he's better than me, not because he's tall. You get it? And so there's the study was trying to see if there's a – they conceived that makes a big difference. The, what if there's a cerebral – like are those people just built differently, you know, like mentally? Like some people are just more ambitious than others perhaps, or maybe some people have it. And that's true. Again, that's still true. That some people will have slight advantages. But the study proved that not to be true. Now, let me explain. So they said – they, so they took this group of students that were leaving elementary school, and they took half of the students, and they put them in a, a regular public school, and then took the other half uh, to a musical-driven music, like, middle school, okay? And so uh, they looked at the students, and all the students in the, in the school 
were all basically uh, at the same level. Like some students were really good, some students weren't at musical instruments at some level, right? But they, they separated it as much as possible. And so they they waited a year and then they looked at the results of the students from the regular public school. And they found that the people that went to the regular public school for a year, um, there was no change really. If, if they didn't play music before, then they didn't, they weren't any better, right? And if they um, were into, into their music instruments before, uh, they were a little bit better, you know? For sure, they actually did get better. The people that were already naturally interested in, okay? The people that were talented, quote unquote. So what was the result of the kids who went to the music school? Well, if talent is truly a thing, then it should have yielded similar results, right? Meaning that the people that were already interested in music would have accelerated, probably even more so, right? Of course, now they're going to school that caters to music. And the people that were not interested uh, should be okay. But the results were obviously not that. Because the results were that the the one, even the least interested student and the quote-unquote least talented student from the study was more talented or more amazing at their musical instrument than the best student from the regular public school. Do you see what I'm getting at? Like they weren't like if you would if you had no idea that they had no interest before, you would have thought this person is a talented individual. Do you understand what I'm getting at? And they and they're like, wait, whoa. Like, okay, so this is clearly something going on. So maybe it's just the way the school's handling. Like, what is what did the music school do differently that the regular school didn't do? Well, the regular school gave them only an hour and a half of study time for music. And during that hour and a half a week, it was not mandatory, meaning that you could just dick around in music class. Okay? Like you could just you just had to show up. And so the kids that were interested in music, they took that opportunity and they would train, but it was only an hour and a half. You know, mm -hmm. where the kids in the music school were given an hour and a half every day and then another hour of homework every day. So kids were easily spending up to 10 to 15 hours a week practicing musical instruments for a whole year. And it was mandatory. It wasn't like, yeah, oh, you show up, you kind of, no, it was mandatory. You know, they still had the regular classes like science, math, English, whatever, right? But they also had like a very strong elective that was mandatory. You get it? <clears throat> and so then spending 10 to 15 hours a week, um, every week for a year, made these kids, uh, even the lowest of the low, like the least accomplished one of them all, potentially able to go to like a school like Julian Arts, right? Like schools that are built all around music, you know, like recognizable uh, accredited schools that would make you a musical god, <laughs> okay? <laughs> these kids were not, like they were two steps away from being able to go to these types of schools once they left like high school. You understand what I'm getting at? Yeah. <clears throat> and so this is where I've, like I base my evidence off of this is because I believe that it's true. I think if you only spend a little bit of time, uh, if you spend like about 15 hours a, a week on something, you can definitely accomplish something extraordinary um, in in a longer time span, like a years. You know? And this is kind of the statement that I was trying to make earlier too. I forget who I was talking to specifically, but like I was saying, you know, it's fine. Uh, I think it was Colin or I'm um, sorry, Nolan. Um, I think it was him where he working right and so uh eight hours a day it's fine but if you only spend an hour and a half a day just drawing and working on your craft that will lead you up to the 15 to 20 hours a week and that's more than enough if you just keep that consistent for a year or two years or three years you'll be able to leave those jobs now it's, it's hard to think oh man it's like that's so long so far away you know the human lifespan these days can live up to 80 to 90 years old now right so three or four years of your life is nothing in the grand scheme if you live long enough. You know, like I'm still only 33 years old. Right? And people think that I'm 40 or 50 because of the way that I explain things. And it's just because 
it's just because I have so much access to so much information and I'm so focused on being a better teacher and uh, so focused on being a better character designer that uh, I'm very articulate because of these reasons. Also, I learned art when I was older, you know? So it was very, um, I was very aware of what I was learning because I was very cognitive. I was very, uh, um, very present when... Like my daughter, she might have a harder time, right? Because she just draws all the time. It's just like walking. You can't explain walking, can you? Right? But for her, she'll just eat, breathe, sleep, drawing because she just draws all the time. And maybe she'll be able to explain it later because she also has me as an instructor, right? So she'll be able to articulate as well when she gets older because she'll hear me articulate a lot, you know? <laughs> Right now she's five, so it's, I can't get too philosophical about her life and get into it. Like, let me tell you, daughter. Like, you know, she she won't understand it. I'm just making it simple for her. Just draw a lot. That's all she needs to do. She just needs to just keep drawing. So her confidence. I took her to a sketch group the other day, for instance, and people were watching her draw, and they're just like, she's like so confident. Like she doesn't even like sketch. She just draws a circle. <laughs> she goes straight for it. And I was like, exactly. You know. <clears throat> I'm going to get rid of all those bad habits right off, right off the bat. She's confident drawing from the beginning, you know? And she's going to be a rock star by the time she's 10 or 15 years old. And I don't mean like she's going to be good for a 10-year-old. I mean she's going to be good for the industry. <laughs> and she'll just happen to be 10 years old, you know? And uh, I think that's a comp like, – only if she keeps at it. If she decides that it's something that she does not like to do anymore, like she wants to be a gymnast for whatever reason, like she's really into gymnastics for it right now, then that's fine. Like I, I'm trying to teach her a larger lesson of like just keep at it, you know? Um, yeah, and hopefully uh, that, that story gives you guys a little bit more inspiration and motivation to kind of think about your everyday life and just the ability to practice. But I'm going to roll out now. Class is well over – time limit now peace out friends have a great weekend and keep in touch with one another and use the discord to talk and chat if you have more questions there's more time we have more q a's in the future so feel free to ask them um in the following uh weeks but with that being said appreciate you guys' hard work i appreciate you guys' patience too i was talking a lot my wife's probably like what in the world is he doing over there um and i gotta get to work ladies y'all thank you for watching this video i appreciate it Please subscribe to watch more in the future. If you like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you like this content, you can go to my website, robotpencil.net, where you can find mentorships, tutorials, and a Patreon to get more exclusive content. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in my next videos.